And welcome back to another edition of Check It Out. Okay, friends, in today's video, my 2007 Honda Pilot, the timing belt broke. I'll explain to you the process of what happened. I'll let you know the mistakes that I made, and boy, did I ever make a few. I will let you know the options that I have and how much they cost, including replacing the engine, fixing the damaged engine, and I'll let you know where we sit right now. I'll also show you how I confirmed on my own what the problem was. So let's back up a couple steps here. So first of all, this is an 07 Honda Pilot and I have 187,000 miles on it. I have taken extremely good care of it and you can see that in some of my other videos that I have made. So if you subscribe to this channel, look at the playlist um, under Honda Pilot. I've got a whole bunch of videos changing the transmission fluid, so on and so forth. But here is the um, mistake I made. The first timing belt, I changed it at roughly 100,000 miles. Actually, it was 105,000 miles. Now that was from the factory and I actually pushed it a little bit further than I should have on that timing belt. The second timing belt, like I said, I changed it at 105 and it broke while I was driving at 187. So that means that there was 82,000 miles on this second timing belt. So here's what it felt like. I was driving home and I had two of my three kids in the car and just out of nowhere, there was not a loud snap or something like that. I had it in cruise control going about 50 miles on sort of a back road and just out of nowhere, the vehicle lost power and just completely lost power. And I was, I was driving along and I even tried to restart the engine. I thought the engine had turned off and I tried to restart the engine and what I was thinking is something went wrong with a minor electrical problem or maybe I was thinking the fuel pump is what the problem was. So I pulled over to the side of the road. Again, I have my two kids. The timing belt was just not even, it, I, it didn't even dawn on me that it could possibly be that. So on the side, side of the road, I tried to start the vehicle about another two or three times. I popped the hood tinkered around, tried another two or three times to start the engine. That's where my damage occurred. So I had this towed to my house. After watching Scotty Kilmer, I purchased one of these code readers and this was pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link down in the description to this code reader right here. I plugged it in and sure enough, it popped up this code right here, P0340. And I did a little homework on what that could possibly mean. It could mean a few different things going on, but what it can definitely mean is timing belt problems. Something's wrong with the timing. So if you see this code and you're pushing it as far as how many miles on your timing belt, this might be your mistake right here. So this was my pr first piece of evidence that all of a sudden I went from thinking this is a fuel pump. Also on the Honda vehicles, there is a relay like a main relay which can sometimes cause problems and that malfunctions and therefore you don't get fuel that's what i was hoping for but this pulling up this p0340 confirmed that this was timing belt or at least it made me about 80 to 85 percent sure it was timing belt so now that i've read the code and i'm pretty sure it's timing belt i tried to take off these two covers that uh, cover up the timing belt and i have to say they were very very challenging to get off so if you're gonna do this on your own, make sure you've gotta have a good set of tools. There were several sockets that had to be a certain size with certain extensions. It was pretty challenging. I ended up getting the top two covers off. That bottom cover that you see on this picture right here, I did not get off. Okay, so this is what I could see right here. You can see it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of damage there. In fact, you can't see anything at all, except that when I check the tension on that timing belt, there was no tension on one part of it. Part of it did have tension, but another part of it clearly did not have tension on it, meaning that it either stripped or broke. That part was pretty deep down in the engine, so I never actually saw exactly where it tore or ripped at this point. But I could definitely tell this is where my problem was. It wasn't a fuel pump, it wasn't a relay, it wasn't a fuse or anything like that that would have been hopefully easier. This was in fact, the timing belt had failed in one way or another. Now this is a uh, 2007 Honda Pilot, and this is a timing belt on an interference engine. And if you don't know what that means, check it out and look it up. But basically what it means is those pistons can hit the valves if the timing is not correct. So on a non-interference, it really wouldn't be a big deal. You just change the timing belt, put in a new water pump, you're on your way for thousand bucks, maybe 1200 bucks. But with this interference engine, the pistons can hit the valves and bend them. 
and that can lead to all kinds of problems. Now you've got pretty serious engine problems and that's exactly what happened in my case. So at this point, I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and basically found out that I may or may not have damaged the engine and that one way to figure that out is to put a timing belt on it, probably throw in a new water pump as well, start up the engine, cross your fingers and see if I've done any damage to it. Now, after thinking this through and knowing that my timing belt broke at speed and I like coasted along finding a safe spot and I restarted my engine several times, at least I tried to, um, that I was very likely had damaged my engine. So this is an interference engine and very good chance I had done that. So what I did is I called the local mechanic who is very reputable, uh, Honda only, and he walked through the scenario and he's like, you know, you've probably damaged the engine. I can't tell you that for sure until you bring it in. I can diagnose it for roughly $200 and let you know if it's in fact the timing belt and more importantly, if you've done any damage to it and then we can talk and see what we can do. Sure enough, he came uh, back to me the next day and said, hey, you've damaged the engine. It's the timing belt. Um, you've at least bent a few of the um, valve stems and likely even more than that by the story I was giving him. So he said, here's the three options that you've got. Number one, we can fix the engine for $4,900 roughly. Number two, we can replace the engine for you for roughly $6,000. Or option number three is I can help you try to sort of salvage the vehicle, junk the vehicle, however you want to state that. And um, we didn't really discuss how much money I would get for that. My gut instinct is telling me somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000, uh, maybe make it a mechanic special and let someone, maybe even this mechanic himself, try to fix it and then flip it. I don't know exactly how that would go. So after talking it through with him, I decided that I'd like to go ahead and fix this vehicle. Now, part of the reason I decided to fix it is that I've always taken really good care of this vehicle other than waiting too long to uh, change out this timing belt, obviously, but oil changes, transmission fluid, all the other fluids have been done on schedule or early, even down to like the tires, you know, they're nice Michelin tires, just everything that I did to this vehicle. If I had a choice, I spent the extra money on it and I felt like it was a good investment for me to go ahead and fix this engine instead of trying to flip it or put in a new engine. So long story short, friends, I guess maybe it's not so short, but this is my story with this. And the main reason I was kind of saying this one is, you know, it's worth your time to figure out, do you have a timing chain? I have a couple Toyota vehicles, those have a timing chain. So all I really have to do is make sure I change that oil to keep that chain well lubricated with clean oil and I'm kind of good to go. And some vehicles, even some of the Toyota models, um, still have timing belts. And again, this is an 07 Honda Pilot with a timing belt. And again, if, if you do your homework, you should know if you have a chain or a belt and you should know if your engine is interference or non-interference. So this one is the perfect storm. It is a belt which can snap and break and it's an interference engine, which means that if it snaps and breaks, there's a good chance it's gonna do damage to your engine. If you see this code P0340 in a Honda Pilot, any Honda vehicle, maybe even some other makes too, but especially in the Honda, if you see that, be thinking, hey, is this timing belt? It doesn't mean it's timing belt for sure, but you know, I, I hear some people on the forum that see this code and they start going and messing around with the fuel pump. They start messing around with relays and these different things. So make sure that timing belt is taken care of if you see this code. Hey friends, I hope this video helps you out in some way or another. Hopefully you didn't just have your timing belt snap, break, and uh, do damage to your vehicle like mine did. Um, and again, I think I told you that the option I went with, pay the $4,900 and cross my fingers that I can get another three or four or five years out of this vehicle. But that's what I ended up doing and I figured, you know what, a, a new, payment would be somewhere between three and five hundred dollars a month every single month for five years is probably what i'd end up doing and for this to pay five thousand dollars and i really have not had to do a whole lot of um work to this vehicle other than kind of regular maintenance but um very very little for 187,000 miles so for me i think that makes sense anyway leave your comments down below i'd love to hear your story too if you have something like this going on Okay, my friends, I'm adding on to this video. So fast forward about two months or so. First of all, it took about five weeks to have this vehicle done. We ran into a couple little issues 
and ended up working our way through those. Some of the parts that he ordered did not come in as the right part. So I think that this would have taken roughly three weeks or a little bit less than that. It ended up taking a little bit more than five weeks. Also, I've been driving on the vehicle for about three weeks now just to make sure that it's uh, working as it should be. And I have to say it seems to be working perfect just as it was before this whole fiasco happened. So that's the good news. Here's the bad news, if you will. It wasn't cheap, that's for sure. So what I have here is the bill, and it's kind of broken down. I'm gonna walk through that right now. Uh, don't mind the grease that I spilled on there, I'm so sorry. I also have the full and uh, total balance here that we'll go through at the end. How much did I actually have to pay? So let's kind of walk through this quickly. Now again, I'm gonna read through this. I am not a car expert. I'm a normal guy who's pretty handy, does a lot of work on his own car, but this is obviously going over my head here. So let's kind of walk through what we have here. Cylinder head gasket, set for the left-hand side. So one of those at $212. And then it looks like the same thing for the right-hand side that was a little bit less expensive, just under $200 for some reason. The exhaust valve, so we need 12 valves at $31 each is $379. And some of the less expensive stuff, maybe I'll just kind of go through quickly, but camshaft solenoid gasket, so 30 bucks. To the intake valves, $28 each, we need 12 of them, that's $342. Timing belt water pump kit, right? So this is the actual kit that if I was proactive and had the timing belt done, right, and the water pump, if I would have had that done before the belt broke, this is what it would have cost for the parts, $334. Obviously, it would have either been my own labor or paid this person or someone else to put it in. But anyway, that's uh, that's nice to look at for the future and think that I could have gotten away with a lot less of a bill here had I been a little bit more proactive. All right, let's move on. Spark plugs, uh, $120. Did that have to be done? I don't really know. Do I mind that he did it? I don't. Uh, crankshaft seal in the front, $14. Coolant, $46. Engine oil filter, so we changed the oil on this too, so roughly a $30 oil change is what he charged there. Cylinder head bolt set with washers, two of those at 50 bucks, so roughly $100. Also, this is the serpentine belt, I believe, which is uh, 50 bucks. Exhaust rocker arm shaft, 66 bucks. Uh, thrust washer, $20. So when we come all said and done here, he's got uh, roughly $1,800 parts. And then subbing out the work, what he had to sub out was $1,200. And then he's got just a little bit in here for that uh, oil change and hazardous materials. So let's see here. Here's kind of that final page. And again, I covered up a little bit of the information that had like my address, phone number. I'm not going to put that on here. But anyway, let's take a look here. Okay, so labor is $1,800. Parts, $1,900. The sublet, $1,200. Hazmat, 10 So the subtotal is... $4,966 after taxes, $5,117. That's right. That's right. $5,000 to get this done. Do I think it's the right decision? I do for me. I'll tell you, I think it's a great area though. I've had this uh, pilot, Honda Pilot, from the get-go. This has been my vehicle. I'm the only owner. I know that I've basically babied it. I drive like an old man, if you will. I don't punch it all that often, every once in a while maybe. But um, I also know that I've been very good about the oil changes, very good about transmission fluids, all that kind of stuff. So for me, I feel like this made sense. Even if I pay $5,000, if I can get maybe three more years out of this thing, I feel like that's a grand slam win for me. Now, if I only get another six months to a year out of this vehicle, oh, all right, that's a loss. But I think I'm gonna get another three or four years. I don't know, maybe even more than that. Now, if this was a vehicle that was maybe my son's and we had bought it and this was like the third owner and I don't really know the exact history of it, you know, I would I do all this? No, I don't, I don't think I would've. I don't think I would've. I don't know what I would've done, but I think I would've basically tried to sell it on Craigslist as a mechanic special for $1,500 or maybe a thousand bucks and just walk away from it and go find something else, you know? But um, anyway, so for my situation, I think this makes sense. Does it break my heart to spend $5,000 on a vehicle that's this old? It does, but again, I still think it's the right decision. Hey friends, do me a favor. It took me some effort to make this video. If this video helped you out, Take a little bit of your effort, give me a thumbs up. If you subscribe to the channel, I sure do appreciate it. Maybe share with a friend. All right, guys, have a good day out there. We'll see you next time.